This video will contain minor spoilers for Zero Time Dilemma. In Zero Time Dilemma, Carlos, Akane, and Junpei of Team C find themselves trapped in an unfamiliar room, and the only way out is to solve whatever puzzle lays ahead of them. And while the task is certainly no easy feat, they immediately get to work, wanting to spend no extra time being held hostage in such a dreary environment. But after solving this puzzle, the way out doesn't open. Instead, a fire starts in the room. Luckily, the carbon dioxide fire extinguisher on the ceiling quickly puts out the fire, but now they face an even more pressing challenge. It doesn't stop. Trapped in a sealed room, Team C will find themselves suffocating to death in a matter of minutes. As the panic starts to take over them, they hear the announcement for a decision game. They must guess which locker out of 10 contains a life-saving oxygen mask. With no clues, a blind guess must be made. A 10% chance to be right. A 10% chance to live. But after making their choice, instead of the locker opening, they are presented with another decision. Eight empty lockers open up in front of them, and they must decide whether to open the locker they first chose, or to open the remaining locker. While Junpei celebrates their odds jumping from 1 in 10 to 50-50, Akane sees what's really going on. Their odds of picking the correct locker out of the remaining two is not 50-50. But before she can provide any more meaningful hints, she passes out. With her own life on the line and no reason to lie, Akane surely wouldn't intend to mislead her team. But if it's not a 50-50, what is the probability of picking the right locker? And more importantly, which locker is more likely to contain the oxygen mask? This is the Monty Hall problem. The Monty Hall problem is named after Monty Hall, the host of a game show with a fascinating theme of push-your-luck type games. Inspired by this, statistician Steve Selvin created a probability puzzle with a similar theme. It goes like this. Monty would present the participant with three doors. Behind one of them is a car, and behind the other two were goats. The participant had no idea what was behind each door, while Monty himself did. The participant was then asked to pick a door, but not open it quite yet. If the participant's selected door had the car behind it, Monty would open a random door with a goat. But if the participant's selected door had a goat behind it, Monty would open the other door with a goat. Afterwards, he would present the participant with the opportunity to either open their selected door or switch to the closed door that they didn't pick. So, faced with two different options, one would believe that they have a 50-50 shot at the big prize. But, as stated before, this isn't correct. The real probability of going home with a car is 2 out of 3 if you switch doors. But why? How can having the choice between two options be anything but a 50-50? Taking this case by case, let's say doors 1 and 2 have goats, while door 3 has a car. If you pick door 1, the host opens door 2. If you switch, you win. If you pick door 2, the host opens door 1. If you switch, you win. Finally, if you pick door 3, the host opens either door 1 or door 2. If you switch, you lose. This means that switching doors has a two-thirds chance of winning. The reason why this is different from a 50-50 lies in when you made your first selection. When the problem is first presented, you make a blind guess out of three options. As you'd expect, the chance of you picking the right door is 1 in 3. 
But when an incorrect option is later eliminated, that chance does not change because you made your choice, your guess, when three options were present. As a result, the remaining probability of success must lie in the final option, the door you didn't select. The golden question in the end is, what are the chances your first blind guess really is correct? But how can this be? The timing of making a decision somehow changes the probability of being right? Then let's try scaling it up. Say there is one million doors. One of them contains a car, while the other 999,999 contain a goat. Then you pick one door. If it has a car, I'll open 999,998 random doors with a goat. If it has a goat, I'll open every other door that has a goat. 999,998 of them to be exact. Then you have the same decision. Do you keep your door or switch? Or in other words, are you absolutely confident that your door, the one in a million you selected, is really the door? So, going back to the crisis facing Team C, the correct course of action becomes clear. With only a 10% chance that their initial choice was correct, that means that switching lockers has a 90% chance to save their lives. And so, they switch. But, a game of probability relies on just that. Probability. And sometimes, in a cruel, twisted turn of fate, when stacking the odds in your favor, when given a second chance to make the right choice, you can be unlucky enough to have just been that lucky. Thanks for watching.